next UN summit in September of this year uh, will be the second ever health issue before the UN General Assembly. Why uh, NCDs, as we call them, heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, obesity, why are these problems so important? Uh, well, they're the biggest cause of uh, preventable loss of life now. Uh, the cost is huge and it keeps increasing, so it threatens the sustainability of health services, but also the economy. And um, it's coming more and more to young people. We're seeing the problem emerging of childhood obesity, and it's affecting productivity in the workplace. So for all these reasons, uh, it needs to come not only as a health issue, but to come to the attention of the United Nations to get an all-of-society response. The idea started uh, in our region, in the Caribbean countries. In 2007, there was a historic first meeting of CARICOM heads of state uh, on the subject of NCDs because they had a, a very serious problem with uh, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, and so on. And they recognized that this was an economic and development problem. And the ministers of health and the former director of PAHO, Sir George Aline, as we call him, Sir George, um, persuaded the heads of government to have a special summit. This followed work of the Commission on Health and Development, and that commission recommended that chronic diseases was a super priority for the Caribbean region, together with AIDS and injuries and violence. Uh, but the biggest one was chronic disease. And in September of 2007, there was this first ever uh, summit of heads of state of the Caribbean. They made a very strong declaration pointing to need for uh, reducing tobacco, improving the diet, trade policies, education sector, uh, a range of, of other sectors were addressed, as well as health. And this gives an idea of why it needs to go to heads of state, because most of the risks for this epidemic of killer NCDs uh, lie outside of the health sector. Uh, that was the beginning, in a way. From there, you can trace um, that the Summit of the Americas took it up, and then the Commonwealth Heads of Government, which is um, one-third of the people of the world, took it up and they passed a resolution that this needed to go to the United Nations. Um, because uh, the, it's a global epidemic, it needs a global response, and there are global drivers. Uh, changes in urbanization, changes in uh, the food supply, uh, advertising, these are, are global forces uh, that needed to be addressed globally. Um, and so last year, in the Caribbean countries, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, made the proposal, and then in May, uh, it was accepted that there would be a special uh, uh, summit, special assembly, uh, this year in September. The countries uh, have to make uh, a, a greater uh, attention to the problem, and this is beginning in our region and elsewhere in the world. Recognition that these problems are, are, are serious, that they threaten development, and that they're mostly preventable through control of tobacco, through improving diet, uh, healthy schools, improving access to preventive treatment. There are many good examples. Uh, if we go to South America, we see that in Argentina, for example, uh, reducing a program for reducing salt in the bread, which reduces hypertension. Uh, all the bakers have come together uh, in the Bakers Association and they have made an agreement to reduce the salt by 25%. Why bread? Because bread is the biggest salt, uh, source of salt in Argentina. In Uruguay, very strong anti-tobacco program. Brazil has been a big scaling up of primary health care, preventive care for people who are, are at risk of cardiovascular disease, and this is showing a great benefit in reducing hospitalization. Uh, come to Colombia, there is a new anti-obesity law. Uh, it does not make obesity illegal. What it does is it uh, gives directions for healthy schools, uh, to the agriculture sector, to urban planning, to transportation, to make the conditions and the environment better so people can make the healthy choice, the, the easy choice. Uh, you come to the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago has reduced the rate of amputations from diabetes. Barbados has a very strong interdisciplinary uh, commission. Jamaica, all the churches are involved. Um, in Central America, Guatemala, uh, Costa Rica. So the countries are beginning to uh, put, in, put into practice the, the scientific evidence of what works. It varies depending on the country, uh, on what makes sense uh, for that country. The work of the Pan American Health Organization is to help uh, to accompany that process, to help that process, to document and to share experiences between the countries. The Pan American Health Organization, working together with the countries, tries to bring everyone to the table because government alone cannot solve this problem. That is clear. For this reason, we are working at creating a, a partners forum where the government, 
companies and the civil society can, can together discuss and take and plan and take joint action to tackle this problem. Um, healthy workplaces requires all, employ all places of employment to be smoke-free, have healthy diets and so on. Um, the, the private sector has major contributions to make in terms of reformulating food, in terms of bringing healthier products, more transparency of information, reducing advertising to the children. That's just the food sector. The whole entertainment, media, communications has a big job to improve the quality of information and to empower people so they can better manage uh, their condition. In our region, we have 900 million people. Of those already, 250 million have some chronic condition. So people need to be much more involved, families need to be more involved in managing their condition. So what PAHO, what the Pan American Health Organization does is to work with the countries to bring to the table all the different sectors, um, the business sector I mentioned, also the civil society. In the last two years we have helped to launch um, a healthy Caribbean coalition and just last month a healthy Latin American coalition. Those civil society bodies bring together the civil society organizations in heart disease, in, in, in cancer, in diabetes, uh, but also women's movements, uh, trade unions, the churches, um, thing called the, uh, the five a day uh, for eating, eating fruits and vegetables. Many different people coming together to work to take action to, to, to improve health and to prevent disease. So we help to convene, we draw attention to the problem, we provide leadership in terms of uh, what are some of the feasible solutions? Uh, we evaluate, we share experiences between countries, uh, and we have an ongoing monitoring system uh, to identify the trends and to help to inform policy. So those, those are some of the roles of the Pan American Health Organization. Well, for heads of state uh, to realize that we have a serious problem that threatens uh, human and economic development, that there are a lot of prevention measures that they can take that will save a lot of needless death reduce the upward cost spiral in health and improve productivity of people and populations. Uh, for the general public to realize that there are a lot of preventive measures that people and families can take uh, to stop smoking, to eat uh, less salt, eat less fat, less sugar, and to eat more fruits and vegetables, walking 30 minutes a day, cut your risk of heart attack in half. Uh, these are some of the lifestyle messages that people can do to contribute to, to this situation.